Hey everybody, I'm Bob Lucido, and you're back in the Bearcat Training Camp, where we're offering in-depth business building training for Team Beachbody coaches. Today I want to share with you what I call the three crucial ingredients to leadership. The first is lead from the front. Okay, that's number one. Lead from the front. You have to be the example of what you want duplicating in your organization. Okay, now maybe you've heard the saying, speed of the leader, speed of the pack. That is certainly true in this business. Your team or your organization is going to do what you do. The things that are going to duplicate in your team or in your organization are going to be the things that you do yourself. Have you ever heard the story of the three minute mile? I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into it, but Google it, okay? The first person to break the three minute mile, it's a great story. But in a nutshell, here's what happened. No one had broken the three minute mile in forever. It had never, ever, ever been done. In fact, people believed your, you know, your heart would explode or you know, that it just wasn't humanly possible. And then the three minute mile was broken. But that's not the really amazing part. The really amazing part is that once the three minute mile was broken, Within the next few months, several people also broke the three minute mile. Once that glass ceiling was broken, belief began to spread. Belief that it could be done empowered it to be able to be done by others. And now it's actually, I won't say common, but for you know, top level athletes, it's something that happens. There's high school kids who break the three minute mile now. That's a great little analogy for what I'm talking about here when I say lead from the front. You have to be the one that breaks the glass ceiling for your team. You have to be the one that shows everybody that it can be done. You have to be the one that makes it to diamond. You have to be the one that's qualifying for success club. Um, you know, you have to be the one that goes to five star diamond. Uh, if you want elite coaches in your team, then become an elite coach. If you want million club members in your team, become a million club member coach yourself and, and onward and onward. You have to set the example show that it can be done, and then reach a hand back to your teammates and say, let's go. Now there's belief, there's a trust in you that you do, in fact, know the way. And so, but belief and trust together in your team and your organization, and you will see amazing things happen because they will follow you, they will go down that same path that you tread. The first year that I became an elite coach, I was the only elite coach in my team. The very next year, three more coaches in my team joined me in that status. And it's continued to grow ever since then because of the ripple effect. Because of what I'm sharing with you right now, of course, we were sharing as a team from the beginning, and not only was I doing these things, but the new leaders that came up in my team did the same things, followed the same concepts. Why? Well, because of this first crucial ingredient of leadership. What you do will duplicate. If you lead the way and you uh, drive the path, you break the glass ceiling and then lend a hand and say, come with me and I'll walk down the path with you, show you the way, then those who you do that with, who succeed and make it there, will turn around and do the same thing for their teams. And then you'll start to see that ripple and that duplication of leadership. And it starts right there in this first crucial ingredient starts that process going down the road, okay? So that's one thing. What else do I mean by uh, lead from the front? Get to the events. <laughs> Get to the events. If you want 
your coaches get into the events, then you better be there. Uh, I just came back from Summit 2017. It was my eighth summit, my eighth year in a row getting myself to Summit. When there's a Super Saturday, I'm there. In fact, most of the time, I'm going to two or three Super Saturday events because you know so sometimes there'll be one on a Friday and then somewhere else there's a one on a Saturday and then invariably somebody's having one on a Sunday. Um, I'm in the Northeast, I'm in New England, so I'll go to one in Boston, I'll go to one in Connecticut, or maybe in Rhode Island or Albany, there's always a couple around that, that you can get to. There's usually a couple happening in Boston, uh, and I've even traveled further to get to them. In the old days, we used to have events called game plan events, um, and again, I always made sure that I got to them, uh, you know, even if it meant traveling a little bit because I understood the value of being at those events, I wanted my coaches, my team, to also get to the events because, again, I understood the power of those events and I knew that the way to get them there was to get me there so that they knew that I would be there and thus, driving them to be there too. You have to be an active participant. You know, we've been talking about that a little bit uh, in some of the earlier videos that we've done here as well. Don't stand on the sidelines and say, go do it. Do it yourself and say, come along with me. Let's do this. Let's do this together is way more powerful than go do this, go do that. If you really want your coaches and your teams and your organizations to do these things, do them yourselves and invite them to come with you. Come do it with me. Let's do it together. Let's become Success Club All-Stars together. Let's become elite coaches. Let's become Million Club members. On and on and on. Okay, lead from the front. What else does lead from the front mean? It also means understand the business that you are now an owner of. Have you read the PMP? Do you feel like you have, and that's the policies and procedures, by the way, the rules, right? Um, are you familiar with those? Have you read it? Um, you know, I know a lot of it's kind of illegalese and it's difficult to read, but have you read it? Do you have a basic, fairly good understanding of the PNP, the rules and regulations behind the business that you are now an owner of? Your team wants you to say yes to that. Your organization wants you to confidently answer that question in the affirmative because they're looking to you for leadership, okay? Now, if you're having difficulty understanding some parts of it, get together with your upline. You've heard me talk about leveraging a lot in this group, right? I talk about that all the time. Leverage above and then offer opportunities for your teams to leverage you. That's the key ingredient here. Not something we're talking about today, but might as well throw it in there. Leverage your upline. If you don't quite understand something that you're reading in there as you're bringing yourself up to speed, ask some questions. You know, call compliance. I love our compliance uh, group at, at Team Beachbody. They are some of the most helpful, informative people you will find. If you have a question, call them. Bring yourself up to speed. And don't just wait till there's an issue on your team. Go through the PNP right from the beginning. Make sure you have a solid understanding of the structure and rules of this business that you now own. Your team wants that of you. They're looking for that from you. Again, it's going to build trust and belief in you. And that's what you want. You lead from the front, number one. You lead from the front. You do all the things that you want your team to be doing, and then you also and continue to instill that belief and trust, leading from the front, confidently understanding the rules within which 
we operate our businesses. Okay? Now that also means understand the different programs. Spend some time understanding how do you become an elite coach? What are the, the rules to success for uh, qualifying for Success Club? You know, we've got this brand new quarterly diamond bonus now for diamonds and one star diamonds. What are the requirements for that? You know, there's only three or four. Take a couple of minutes. Make sure you understand that so that when you share the news that this is an opportunity for your coaches to qualify for, you can also explain to them how they qualify. And again, they can have trust and belief in you understanding that you're confident in what you're sharing and then they can take the leap of faith to then go for those things because they understand the rules. You've laid it out for them. Okay? Another thing that you want to do is make sure that you know your sweet spot in this business and confidently dive into it a hundred percent. I've heard that over and over and over again from some of the top success speakers in the world. Uh, you know, people like John Maxwell, Darren Hardy, Gary Vaynerchuk. Find your sweet spot. What's your bailiwick? What's the thing that you really resonate with in this business? And you've heard me talk about this before. If you've been following the phase one and phase two videos, this is not the first time you've heard this, okay? You have to figure out and connect with your sweet spot in this business and dive in 100%. Because that's what you want your coaches to do. And they have to see you doing that. Don't be someone who's floundering around and changes your business plan every week or changes your business plan every month or even every year. Um, you know, asterisk here, as most of us are coming home from, from Summit right now, and that may be you too. Summit's an amazing place and you get all kinds of great um, knowledge and, and all kinds of great information. One thing though that can kind of be a hazard is sometimes coaches take that and they come home and they redo their whole business. Don't do that. If you've got some good stuff going on, you know, even maybe even just, you know, maybe you're not happy with everything that's going on, don't recreate everything that you're doing. Add some of the things that you've learned in. Don't take your momentum away from what you're all ready doing, okay? And, and that's part of what I'm talking about here with understanding your bailiwick, understanding your sweet spot. Don't be someone who's flailing around and changing your plan all the time. Your, your team sees that. Your organization sees that. And then they don't know if they should be following you because you keep changing your mind all the time. Everything's shifting. Everything's changing. They, they want to see you in your strength, in your sweet spot, 100% driving forward, that then gives them, here's those two words again, the belief and trust to do the same thing. And that's where you want them. You want them finding their own sweet spot, diving in and going forward full force. Okay, look, be a team player because you want your teams to be team players, or you want everybody on your team to be a team player. That's really what I'm talking about here. Get in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and say, oh, how come none of my coaches do anything? I don't know. I have a coach basics program for them, and I tell them when their events are, and I have a team page with all the info. Are you doing it? Are you in the game being a team player? That's the number one crucial ingredient to being a good leader, okay? Treat your business like a business and then all of the rest of your team will treat their businesses like a business. Bring some professionalism to it, okay? Okay, that's ingredient number one. Lead from the front. Crucial ingredient number two. Seek out your business partners. Okay? Again, not a new concept if you've been following along in these videos and in this training. I've talked about this before. Why? Because it's crucial. <laughs> That's why it throws, shows up as one of the three crucial ingredients 
to leadership. It's number two, and you know, in some ways it might be the most important, okay? You have to seek out your partners. This is network marketing. You've heard me say this before too, it's a team sport. No one succeeds in network marketing on an island. No one succeeds in network marketing on their own. This is a team sport. You're trying to build a network. You're trying to drive duplication. You're trying to build leaders, right? So that you have depth, so that you have security and all those things that we've been talking about, all right? And if you haven't heard me talking about those things and you're just jumping in here for the first time on this video, you might wanna go back and listen to some of those phase one and phase two videos to get a little bit of a background on what I'm talking about here. But you've got to get it done. You've got to find your partners and then connect with your partners and partner up, okay? And by the way, let me underline a concept here that is, it's, it's just crucial, okay? I'm sorry, I can't find another word right now. It's not only is it a part of this crucial ingredient, it's just crucial to your success. You cannot leave this out. Look for your partners in your entire team, in your entire organization. Please, please, please don't take this mentality of only working with your PS coaches or only working, I mean, only seeking your, your business partners amongst your PS coaches. You have to think organizationally. You want strength and depth in your business, okay? Work with those who are rising up in your team, rising up in your organization, personally sponsored or not, if they're really showing potential and they're really ready to run with you. They're ready to partner with you. It's crucial that you have partners, okay? So don't overlook the ones who, the potential ones who might be in your team or in your organization just because they're not your personally sponsored coach. That's a huge mistake. I'm here to say that's a huge mistake. Okay, it might not earn you any elite points or any success club points. I don't care, all right? Do the things to earn those points if you're trying to qualify for those programs. But we're here to talk about building a solid, sustainable business with depth, with security. That takes building leaders and that takes finding your partners and partnering up, okay? There's nothing that will give you a greater level of security than finding your partners, getting in and partnering with them, and I'm gonna talk about that in a, in a minute, what I really mean by that, but getting in their business and really being a partner. But you gotta find them, and then you gotta partner up with them. That, I'm here to say, is way more important than just about anything else you can do because that's going to develop your next level of leaders and that's what builds a big organization. That's what builds security. That's what drives volume. That's what builds you know, longevity. It's partnering up with your fellow leaders, personally sponsored or not, as long as they're in your organization. Look, I'm very blessed to have found some very good partners uh, in the beginning, and, and, and I'll say that right up. I now have four personally sponsored who are in the Million Club. That's fantastic. But I also have eight who are in the Million Club in my ATV line, my first three levels of leadership, uh, or three levels of sponsorship, which means the, the, the group that is my personally sponsored, they're personally sponsored, and they're personally sponsored. That's our ATV line. That's your inner circle. That's your, you know, that, that's the core of your business. Please pay attention to your ATV line. And I even say don't limit, to, limit it to that when it comes to seeking out your partners. They're anywhere in your organization. They're anywhere in my organization. I'm seeking them out and I'm working with them and I'm partnering with them because I know that is what explodes the business. That's what explodes your downline, explodes the volume. 
all of that stuff that you know helps us to optimize the comp plan like we've talked about in some of the earlier videos it comes from seeking out those business partners personally sponsored or not i'm sorry for beating a dead horse on that one but it you just got to get that one in your head it's just amazingly powerful what finding your partners and then partnering with them will do for your business personally sponsored or not that's the stuff that's going to get you to the business building foundation that we've been talking about in this group okay so you got to have that organizational thought you have to know that you're not just building your success alone you build your success and you do success club and elite and you know all the qualifications for the you know for the different recognition programs you do those things so that you're leading from the front because you want those things duplicating in your business okay but you don't end it there you then also crucial ingredient number 2 to leadership seek out your partners and then partner up Okay, you got to get arm in arm, and, and that, and like I said, that means getting in the business with them, doing joint or even small group biz ops, doing joint or small group, uh, you know, fit clubs or shaking shares or whatever you're doing. You know, one of the things that I used to do with my little you know, that little group for me in the very beginning, and I still do it now, kind of at a bigger scale, but I'm trying to, you know, give you an example of what it looks like in the beginning, and that is showing up at each other's fit clubs, showing up at each other's shaking shares, doing uh, the challenge groups together, doing business opportunity webinars together, um, doing three-way calls with prospects. Um, you know, and sometimes if, if you're the, you know, you're the leader and maybe you're somebody even who's at the level of doing this full time, you make the calls. You know, I've had many times where I've got people I'm working with and, and they're these partner potential people and I'm working closely with them and then, you know, maybe they're still working their full time job. This is still, you know, a part time thing for them. Then oftentimes what I'll say is, look, I'm full time. I got a little bit more time here. If you've got a list and, and, and you need to be doing these follow-ups and you're telling me you just don't have enough time to reach out to them, let me take a couple of the names for you. Let me, what are their, what's their phone numbers? Okay, I'll call them up. I'll say, hi, my name's Bob Lucido. Uh, I'm uh, partners with whoever that might be. And I understand that they sent me a Shakeology uh, sample. I just wanted to follow up and see if you had any questions. We, you know, we work together as a team. That's one of the cool things about uh, Team Beachbody. And I'm just uh, calling on, on her behalf uh, to follow up, you know, whatever. Boom, okay? I've partnered, I've helped that person move their business forward in a very real way, much more powerful than saying, oh, did you do your follow-ups? Go do your follow-ups. What does that do? Not much, not much. That's not a partner. Be partners with those who are ready to step up and partner with you. Crucial ingredient number two. All right, crucial ingredient number three. You've got to have a vision. You know, just like I was saying about the need for you to understand the P&P &P and understand the rules and all that kind of stuff, you also have to have a clear vision of what you're doing as a Team Beachbody coach, a clear vision for the team that you're trying to build, a clear vision of your goals, a clear vision of the organization that you're trying to build, the big picture, the big picture. What's your connection with that mission that we have as Team Beachbody coaches to help people to reach their own goals and live healthier, more fulfilling lives? What's your connection to that directive? What's your connection to the mission to end the trend of obesity in this country and then, you know, as we continue to expand globally, even worldwide? What's your connection to that? What is your personal vision of the big picture? And then what is your why? Do you have a clear picture of your why? Because your why and your vision are connected. 
Your why will drive your vision. And you need them both. And then this is part of this third crucial ingredient of leadership. Why? Well, because the first crucial ingredient was lead from the front, lead by example. And until your coaches on your team and in your organizations connect with their why and connect with their vision, they ain't going nowhere. All right? So you got to connect with yours first. And then you help them to connect with theirs. This is so important, people. You can't overlook this one. And I know that some of you already are glossing over and saying, oh, he's talking about the why again. Everybody talks about the why. Why does everybody talk about the why? Because it's crucial. And most people don't spend enough time on it. And that's why there's always a small percentage of people who actually rise up and find this great high performance level of success that I'm trying to show you the path to. Because most people just skirt over that why. They give it a little bit of attention. They skirt over that connect with your vision part. And they don't actually get it done. And then those in their teams don't actually get it done. Then those in their organizations don't actually get it done. And without that, you can't move forward. If these are the three crucial ingredients to leadership, you can't take one of them out because then there's only two and it falls. You ever seen a tripod, right? Try to do that with two legs. It ain't going to work. You need all three. Look, if you were at Summit, you heard this from the stage twice. Maybe you didn't catch it. Maybe you did. But you heard it from two people. You heard it from both of the keynote speakers. Does that tell you something? Maybe it's important. Darren Hardy talked about it when he, was, when he shared that story uh, about connecting with the why that's going to change the choices that you make and then leads to changing the behaviors and then so on, moving down his, uh, his little graph towards the culmination of reaching success. And he told a little story about, well, if we had a hundred foot long steel beam on the floor and I offered you $20 to walk across it, you'd easily walk across it. If I put that steel beam now a uh, hundred, a hundred stories up in between two buildings and asked you to walk across it for $20, most of us would say, hell no, right? I think probably 99.9% .9 of us would say, hell no. Because there's no why. $20 isn't enough to make me walk across a steel beam uh, hovering between two buildings at a hundred story height with the winds and everything else going on. And then he shifted it a little bit and he said, well, what if your child or your spouse or your significant other or whatever the, whatever the most important being in your life is, maybe it's your dog or your cat or your goldfish, whatever it is. But he used the analogy of your child. Not all of us have children, but those of you who do have children, imagine your child is on that building on the other side and that building is engulfed in flames and your child's on the top of the building screaming from the top of their lungs for you to come save them. You gonna cross that steel beam now? I bet you do. I bet you go running across that steel beam as fast and as hard as you can and I bet there's nothing that's gonna stop you from getting to the other side because now you're connected with a why. Now you're connected with a why. Now you're connected with a vision. The only vision that you can see is you go to getting over there and saving that child or that person or that dog or cat or whatever it is for you. That now is your vision. You see that end vision. You see nothing else. And that why burns inside of you and drives you across that steel beam to get across to save that child. That's what we're talking about. You gotta have that kind of a why. You have to be connected with why you're in this. Because let's face it, it's not easy, okay? Anybody who told you it's easy, it's not. It's not easy, okay? You gotta connect with a lot of people. You gotta learn how to become a good leader. You gotta start duplicating that process. You gotta build community. You gotta get vulnerable with people. You gotta connect with people. All those things we've been talking about in the phase one and phase two videos. And it's the why and your vision that's gonna drive you towards it. And more importantly, as a leader, 
It's that why and vision that drives you forward that's also going to bring, and here's those two words again, belief and trust into those following you to connect with their why and to find their vision and get connected so that you can all move forward. It's that important, okay? So now, again, back to Summit. Not only did Darren Hardy talk about it, Brandon Burchard talked about it as well. Do you remember when he told that story about being the college kid who went down to the, I forget where he went, but he was in some Caribbean island, I think, and uh, got in a horrible car accident and told that you know heart-wrenching story about lying on the hood covered in blood and he's about to go unconscious. Basically, he's, 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 on the, he's, on, you know, he's on the foot of death. And then he had that experience where he talked about that he felt as though God or whatever omnipotent being, whatever word you want to use for him, that's what, you know, that's, that, that's, that's what he used. So I'm going to use that. It's his story. God looked down at him and said, don't worry, it's going to be okay. But now you know time is limited. And then Brendan said that the feeling that he got was he had been handed a golden ticket that he called the second chance. And then he told us how from that point forward, the driving force and everything that he's done has been to pay back for that second chance, to earn that second chance. He dedicated his life, the whole rest of his life, to understand that it's limited here to help others reach their highest potential, and that's his way of earning that second chance. Do you know what that story was? That was his why. That was his vision for why he's doing what he's doing. Why does a guy, as young as he is, get to mentor people like Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, uh, the Dalai Lama, for Pete's sake? Why? Because that dude's got a vision a real vision and a very strong one and a very strong why. And it's driven him to that level of success. So if people like Darren Hardy and Brendan Bouchard are basing their entire keynote speech on this concept of the why and of having a good, clear, solid vision driving what you're doing in order to reach success, don't you think you might want to pay attention to that? Don't you think that might be important? Well, I'm here to tell you that it is. And it's the third crucial ingredient to leadership. And here's just one more thought for you to close down. Once you get that, once you learn how to and you develop and you go through those processes and procedures and go back to the phase one and phase two videos to learn more about it and there's lots of personal growth stuff out there about how to help you find your why and connect with your vision dig into that do a little bit of homework once you learn that once you've got that for yourself run with it and now here's the little bit of a twist a little asterisk here on this third one and that is learn how to bring that out in those who you're working with. Learn how to see their success before they do and speak that to them and help to uh, cultivate that in them. That's for your customers and your coaches, those who are in your challenge groups and they wanna lose 20 pounds or 50 pounds or 100 pounds. You see them at that goal because the likelihood is they don't see themselves there yet strong enough, and that's why they haven't been able to get there yet. They're waiting for the coach, or the mentor, or whatever word you want to use, who can see them already there and help them focus in on that vision too, because that's the only way they're going to get there. And that's what we do as coaches, for our customers and for our business partner coaches. I mean, let's face it, every single one of us who comes into this business, including me, I came in as a hobby coach in the beginning. You know, it wasn't, they didn't come in on day one and go, okay, here I am. I'm going to be a million club member with multi, you know, other multi million club members in my organization and lead tens of thousands of people. No, it was like, wow, how am I going to find my first person? How do I get to Emerald? Hey, maybe I could sign up my wife and find one friend, right? Everybody starts somewhere. 
But you know what? I had a great mentor in the very beginning. And he was able to see me here today. And he, not only that, but he was able to speak that to me. He was able to help me see myself eventually sitting here today on the kind of organization that I now am blessed to be leading. I didn't see it in the very beginning. I had to go through the process of learning to see it so that I could get here. But I had someone who helped me to see it. And that, you know, may have been the most powerful gift that I was given in all of this. Because truly, that opened the doorways and enabled me to start gathering these other ingredients and mix them all up into this amazing, phenomenal success that I've been able to find with this opportunity. And I know you can find it too, and I know you can get there too, because I've helped person after person after person get there in my own organization. I've seen it happen over and over again, and there's always some common ingredients. These are the three crucial ingredients to leadership. Contemplate them, meditate on them, study them, cultivate and develop your skills and actions within these three crucial ingredients, and I guarantee you, you will see your business grow. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you next time.